Hi, I'm John Stevenson, and we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapters 1, verses 1 through 3, in the beginning of our study of the book of Hebrews, part of our overall series on the general epistles. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 starts off, God, after he had spoken long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days, has spoken to us in his son. Notice, the big idea here is that God, even though he spoke in a number of different ways, back in the Old Testament he spoke in dreams and visions and, and in prophetic words and sometimes in wisdom, but now in these last days has spoken to us in his son. That's a much better way of speaking. That's a much more intimate way of speaking. He's spoken to us in his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Now, notice we pick up, I've, 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 I'm just keeping the, the big idea here. God has spoken to us in his Son, we just said, who he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the world. And he is, that is that Son, he is the radiance of his glory, and the exact representation of his nature, and upholds all things by the word of his power. And when he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And we're not finished with the sentence yet, but that's as far as we're going to go for right now. Because the big idea here is that God has spoken to us in his son who sat down. And that will be so wonderfully significant because you see the son is going to be described in terms of being a king and a prophet, but especially he'll be described in terms of being a priest. And one thing a priest did, a priest did not sit down, at least not when he was in his service. Uh, you, you went into the temple and there was no place to sit down in the temple, but we have a son who sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now that becomes the introduction then. These, these first few verses become the introduction to the epistle to the Hebrews, where he'll be talking about the son and how we have a son that has spoken to us who sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So that Hebrews will be focusing upon Jesus and how Jesus is better. He, that he's better than the angels. That's going to be the first two chapters. And we're going to see probably more about angels in the first two chapters than we see almost in, in the rest of the Bible. But it's not so much that we focus on angels, but that we focus on the one who's better than the angels, and that is Jesus. That he's better than the angels, and he's also better than Moses or Joshua because he gave a, a better rest than they did. That he is better as a high priest uh, because his, he's part of a priesthood that goes much older than Aaron. Uh, that he is better by providing a better covenant. You have the old covenant, but you have the new covenant, which has superseded the old covenant and is a better covenant. And then in chapter 10, uh, that he offers a better sacrifice, that he is the better sacrifice that is, that is offered. And also that he's, uh, he brings a better way of living. So the chapters 1 through 10 picture the fact that we ought to hold on to Jesus. And then that last section, beginning in chapter 11 and to the end of the epistle, talk about how we are to live as a result of holding on to Jesus. Now, there's a number of warnings that are given in this book. In fact, we could almost outline the book by way of its warnings. For example, he starts off um, in chapter 2. He gives a warning that we take care not to neglect so great a salvation. Uh, a little further, he says, uh, beware of falling away from the living God. And that's a striking thing to say to a Jewish reader. I mean, Jewish readers, you know, we don't fall away from God, but be careful because you're being tempted to in a way you had not realized. Uh, be careful of not entering into his rest. And remember in the context of Jesus being better, that he is the better one that you are in danger of falling away from. The rest of which he's speaking is the rest that is brought by Jesus. Don't miss the rest that he brings. Don't miss the Sabbath that he brings and is. You get to chapter 5. Uh, he says, beware of not going on to maturity. In other words, grow up. Now, we say grow up, and we think baby Christian, uh, advanced Christian, they're going to think about it very differently. That's not the way they will see it. 
they will de be describing the immaturity, that time when they had the law, that time when they were under the law as a way of approaching God, that old, test that old covenant way, uh, versus the new covenant way, the grown-up way, the better way that Jesus has brought. And so there will be also a warning for that those who fall away from Jesus cannot be renewed to repentance in chapter 6, verses 4 through 6, probably one of the most misunderstood uh, ch uh, verses in the entire Bible. But we'll be looking at that when we get there. The warnings continue after that. There's a warning that there remains no more sacrifice for sin if you turn away from that which God has given. It's not, in other words, you can't go back to the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. You can't go back and throw another lamb on the altar if you've rejected Jesus. The, that sacrificial system doesn't do anything anymore. It pointed to Jesus. And, and if you've heard about Jesus and you've come to Jesus, you can't turn around and say, gee, I want to go back and just approach God that Old Covenant way anymore. You, there's no going back. There remains no more sacrifice for sins once Jesus has come and once you've heard of him and once you've believed in him. There is a warning that coming short of the grace of God that no root of bitterness causes trouble. And again, we have to, we're going to look at that not from our perspective, but from a Jewish perspective. That's going to mean something very different. The root of bitterness is going to, going to be speaking of the, the poison of following a false teaching, in this case, a false teaching of returning to the law and leaving Jesus. Don't fall short of the grace of God now that it has come into your, uh, into your midst. 